The Quark power meter that I run on the Shiv time trial bike is a few years old now, only supports Ant Plus. There's no option for Bluetooth. I have to go and upgrade to the D0 Quarks, which will cost me around $2,000 Australian. So I'm kind of limited when I want to run Zwift iOS. Zwift iOS now does support the 30 pin adapters. So there's Ant Plus support for iOS devices, but the limiter there is I've only got one port. So if the batteries start going flat mid ride, it's time to cut the ride short. So here's the alternative we'll look at tonight. North Pole Engineering NPE have made a little device called Cable. C-A-B-L-E stands for Connect Ant Plus to Bluetooth Low Energy. It converts any Ant Plus device into a Bluetooth smart device. Really nifty little trick. Initially support was only for Ant Plus, not Ant Plus FEC. As of today, the firmware has been updated on this. It now supports Ant Plus and Ant Plus FEC. So if you've got a smart trainer, well, most of them have Bluetooth anyway, but the option's there. So it does support Ant Plus FEC. What we'll run through now is the unboxing and setup of this for the Quark power meter, converting it to Bluetooth, and I'll run a sneaky Zwift session beside me while I get my workout done. Let's run through the process. Okay, let's get started. Bluetooth is turned on on the phone. We'll open the app. We'll get this out. Oh, it's actually connected straight away, even though it's not right there. Okay, we've got a firmware update already. Let's go for firmware update. Okay, easy as that, we're fully updated. Scan for Ant Plus devices. I'll go spin the cranks. We're alive. Okay, it's also picked up power from the kicker that the bike's actually connected to. But let's go for the Quark tonight. That's all I'll need to do. So we select Quark, what else do we need to do? I've got a few other devices in this room. Okay, so Quark is selected. Save sensors. Now I'll also spin the pedals on this thing and see if it gets a power reading there on screen. So that showed power and cadence. So obviously it's sending cadence through the power channel as well. That's looking good. And the cable is limited to one of each device as well. So you can see there if I'm selecting the kicker power, it'll deselect others. So you've got bike power, heart rate, foot pod, speed and cadence, and also the fitness equipment, FEC, which was discussed early on, that's the addition for today. So we'll just leave it bike power for now. Okay, and we wanna disconnect from this device and have it as a standalone. So we'll disconnect from now. Oh, and it reconnected straight away, did it? Not what we wanted, so disconnect. We'll close the app. So now we've closed the app. Can we see that as a Bluetooth device? We'll shortcut that by using the Wahoo utility. We can go sensors, add new sensor, and there we have it, cable. What does it report as though? Aha. So we have heart rate, speed, distance. So these are all the things it can send. It is connected to power. So if we jump on the bike now, it should read some power. Let's give that theory a test. Well, good enough for me. So that only took a few minutes to get this thing, well, firmware updated, configured, and reading power from my Ant Plus device and broadcasting over Bluetooth Low Energy or Bluetooth Smart. Not bad at all. So now the Quark is broadcasting in Bluetooth thanks to this little device. We'll start our Zwift session and pair it up. So my setup for this test was quite interesting. I had the Quark on the time trial bike here, hooked up via Ant Plus, the machine behind me, logged in with my normal account, and beside me on the table here, I had Zwift iOS loaded on the iPhone with a secondary Zwift account that I have, hooked up via Bluetooth. So they were both reading the same power meter, but in different ways. So here I was riding along against myself. I was then attacking myself and responding myself to myself. It was quite funny, and I was also having a bit of fun playing with the physics of Zwift. If one rider was ahead of the other, I could sort of counter-attack a little bit, but then the other rider would attack. At, you get the picture. 
I was able in a few different scenarios to pull away from myself. Anyway, I won't go further into that. I was having a ton of fun. But the main aim of the game last night was to collect data from two different sources using the two different methods, direct amp plus to this machine and via the cable to see how clean and how accurate that data was when it was being converted from amp plus over to Bluetooth low energy. So to line this data up perfectly with both files at exactly the same time, what I do is I use the heart rate as the baseline so I pair this via AMP Plus to the Zwift session behind me here, and I use the Bluetooth connection to pair to the iOS device as well. So I know whenever my heart rate changes, it should sync on both devices, and that's exactly what we got here using Ray's tool. Let's jump in and have a look at the data. Onto my favorite website on the internet at the moment, DC Rainmaker's analysis tool. Already two FIT files loaded in here. The blue one, that's kind of handy, which is the Bluetooth connection from the Quark, and the other one is direct AMP Plus power. We've got them lined up here using the heart rate. As I was saying before, I use the heart rate to make sure they're perfectly aligned. You can see the line there. All right, let's scroll up and have a look at the power reporting. Again, this is coming from the same power meter at the same time using two different channels. One direct amp plus, one via Bluetooth using the cable. Let's dive into the first five minute session here. What are we hovering? 350 watts or so for the five minutes and that's tracking it's not identical. There'll always be a small lag here, but that's looking pretty good. Even when I jammed in straight away, that's reading identically there. You cannot separate them, spot on. A little bit of an acceleration jam here. Slight separation at the top there of about 12 watts or so, nothing much in that. Um, another five minute effort there. Bit of a jump in the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth reads a little high there, but that's really, really super close. And the spike there is fine, so that's the second one. So the first hour or so, super happy with that. I can report this thing just works as it should. Really, really happy. Near the end here, there's a little bit of separation with the data. I'm not sure what's going on here. It sort of shadows the data. This could be down to just how Zwift records the FIT files and the timestamps. So North Pole Engineering cable device converts AMP Plus to Bluetooth low energy and it just works. I love it when tech just works. This does. All right, I'll put a link below where you can purchase one of these or find out more information. Thanks for watching. Your views are much appreciated and we'll see you soon.